Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, I'll be building the floating bar chart in Microsoft Excel. So here's an example. I'm representing the minimum and maximum temperatures for place in Antarctica each month for the first six months. So January through June, I have the minimum and maximum temperatures. So when we plot it on this chart, it will appear as so with, again, we can change the colors if you'd like, but just to highlight the temperatures which are positive, we're using a different color, but also importantly, you can see that the bars can go from negative to positive. So in March, it goes from minus four to six, plus six. And then also we have examples where it goes from positive to positive. So basically 22 to 31, all positive values in January, then when you go to June, it's negative 22 to negative six. Everything is negative. So all these scenarios can be handled using the technique that I'm going to use in this video. So let's get started building this. So I have the raw data in this sheet now. And the first thing I'm going to do is to select everything and then press Control T to convert into a table. It usually helps to convert into a table for flexibility to add more records to this table in the future will add automatically to the chart. So that's the benefit. Um, so I just converted into a table. The next step I'm going to do is to just create a simple clustered bar chart to see how it works, right? And I'll explain why this uh, simple chart will not work. So go to insert. And then because I have selected all the table, I can go to 2D clustered bar and it will create a bar chart like this. Now let's move this axis labels, right click, format axis move to the low position which will move that here right now i can select one of these orange or the blue series so i click and choose format data series or um, in the side panel if you don't see the side panel then press Control one and that will open up the side panel in this drop down you can choose one of the series so let's say we choose the minimum series and what i'm going to do is to go to the series options and change the overlap to 100%. Now you'll see that the blue and the orange bars are staggered. Now, as soon as I do overlap 100, they are aligned because they are overlapping 100%. So this works to an extent. You can also change the width. You can see the gap between each month. You know, if I reduce my width, gap width reduced. So the bars become a little bit taller. So it gives you a different uh, appearance, which is, what you may want to go with if you have only a few uh, months of data. If I have more months, I may choose differently. First of all, what is the problem that we are facing? Let's look at uh, January month. January goes from 22 to 31. Look at the, the orange bar here. It goes from 0 to 31. So here itself, we need to uh, make sure that this goes from 22 to 31, not 0 to 31. So that's a problem we have identified. The second problem is when we go to June, uh, the numbers are minus 22 to minus 6. But you see here that there is a um, extra orange bar, which we don't need. It should go from minus 22 to minus 6. So clearly, we see what the problem is. We need to make some changes to the chart to make it look accurately as a floating bar chart. So for that, I'm going to add a first invisible left. So let, let's address this uh, June month. We, we want to basically get rid of this orange section and make it invisible. So how can I do it? I'm going to add another series called invisible left. And I'm going to do a simple formula to say if both are negative. So that means um, you, know, you can do it in many different ways, simple formula. But let me give you something that is most easy and understandable. So if the minimum is zero, and if the maximum is zero, both, that's why I'm putting it into the and function. See, if both are this, then I basically want this six value. So give me the max, comma. If not, give me zero. So let's say that is our logic. Now you saw that it changed in color. Why is that? Let's go back and check. Because we added it as a table, uh, one of the features is that the chart gets automatically updated with a new column or new rows. This is this may not be good in some cases, but in this case, it has been good. Uh, sometimes you want to add columns to your table without impacting the chart. 
Uh, in that case, you can come back and remove the series. In this case, um, because I want the invisible left series, I'm going to keep it there. So what does invisible left do? So the invisible left is nothing new. These values are plotted on the chart with a different color. So I can go here, invisible left, and fill color. Let's say I do a white fill, which is the background of my chart. So as soon as I do that, you see what happened here. And also I can make sure that it doesn't have any border, no border. Great. So now you can see here that, um, let's see, choose one more time. Invisible left, no line. Then let me go to max, no line. There we go. So what you're seeing here is minus 22 is this endpoint, and then this endpoint is minus 6. So we have addressed one part of the problem. The other part of the problem is the, the, for the month of January, it still says 0 to 31. It needs to say 22 to 31. So I will do an invisible right column. And the invisible right column formula is going to be very similar if both are positive. So if min is greater than 0, max is greater than 0, and if both are true, then give me the minimum value, otherwise give me 0. So this is my simple formula. Now that gets added to the chart as well, and so you can see that has its own color. So click on that, and then you can change the color. So you, you want to always make sure that you choose a color which matches the background of the chart, and then I don't want any borders. There you go. So one important thing uh, immediately we should do is you can see that the grid line is kind of getting cut off. I don't, we don't want to use grid line in this example. So let me just say no grid lines. Um, in order to remove grid lines, you can go to grid lines, set to no line. Okay. So now we have um, basically floating bars are now more accurate because for January, it starts from here to here. It's not clear what the values are. So let's add the data labels first. So I'm going to click on this um, series called max, and I will do plus data labels. Okay. So now it adds the label for the plus series. Great. Click on one of those labels. All of them will get selected. And now I want to go to the label position and choose the outside end. And then I need to add the labels, add data labels. So it adds the negative labels, great. Then if I click on the labels, I can change the position. And let's say I do inside end. So this will put everything in the inside end. You can do outside end this way. But you will see that um, depending on which way you want to go, now at least this tells you from minus 22 to minus 6, 22 to 31. Um, so one thing we have to be, um, if you want to make it, you know, look even better with both the labels on both sides ends, uh, then we could add another series. But again, it's a little bit more steps. So if this works for you, then I would stop at that instead of adding more and more formulas. But one clear thing we need to fix here is this, the labels are, should be visible, right? Uh, we don't want to choose these dark colors. So I will choose the minimum series to have a little bit lighter color. And then same thing I will do with the maximum series also. Choose maximum and then change it to a bit different color. There we go. So now you can clearly see the labels. The temperature is going from minus 22 to minus 6, minus 16 to minus 2, 12 to 0, minus 4 to power. So this is the overlap. Um, in some cases, if I don't want to differentiate between the positive and the negative colors differently, uh, then I can just change the purple also to the same blue. Very simple. I'll go and choose the maximum series, go to fill color, and choose exactly, I don't know which blue did I choose. There we go. So now you don't have to differentiate between the you know positive temperatures in a different color. Again, if that's what you can, uh, but some in some scenarios of data, you may want to just present a single color, uh, and you can do this this way. Um, with a couple of minor things, um, you can change this 
zero line um, thickness. So you can click on the zero line and then go to fill uh, and then you can change it to a you know solid line, whatever you know color you want to choose and then increase it to one point. So now it's a little bit pro prominent. Uh, if you don't want it, of course, you can go to no line and then that will remove the line. So you have that option. Then the legend doesn't make sense at this point. So I'm just going to remove the legend, click on the legend and then hit delete key. Uh, so that will remove the legend. So now you have a neat floating bar chain. Let's do some standard chart formatting, chart title. Uh, I'm going to just make sure that this is average temperatures monthly average temperatures and let's format it a little bit there we go okay i note the title click on the chart and go to border and then you can do a little bit of a border from the corners so there you go. So you have a floating bar chart, which can handle negative to negative, negative to positive, negative to zero, positive to positive. All scenarios can be handled uh, using this technique. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Um, you can use a good example would be the minimum and maximum temperatures, but there are other scenarios we could find it useful for. I would like to hear from you uh, how you handle the such a floating bar chart in your case. And um, if there are any suggestions for next set of videos, please put them in the comment section. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching.